Um, I'm here with Dr. John Richard Stedman at the Stedman Clinic in Vail, and uh, you and me have a long history together. Uh, I was first operated by you in 1989 in Lake Tahoe. Um, do you remember a little bit about that surgery? Yes. Uh, yeah? Can you explain yeah, sure. what happened? Yeah, it was a serious injury. It was uh, injury to the ligaments in the knee and some cartilage damage as well. And uh, so we did the surgery there and uh, the surgery was complicated but very successful. Mm -hmm. And so I was very confident that you would return to your former level. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, but it's, you never know for sure, but I was confident because I, I knew that you would do your part and I'd done my part. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy for that because yeah. I believe my uh, career wouldn't have looked the same if I wouldn't have been surgery, had surgery with you because you had a special technique as well to yes. fixing the meniscus and yes. that was not so common in 1989. Yeah, it was a, um, I recognized that in that, those years, the mid 80s, that that the, the, the ligament was important and it was easy to feel the ligament on examination but the, the meniscus cartilage was the uh, cushion that that uh, distributed the pressure over the whole knee mm -hmm. so I became uh, extremely interested in in trying to save the meniscus cartilage by by doing repairs yeah that's definitely but you very, <laughs> yeah very very important so, so can you tell us a little bit about your story? Because at this time, 1989, you were in Lake Tahoe. What happened then? What brought you here to Vail, Colorado? Yeah, well, I, I went to Lake Tahoe um, in 1990 and um, had a very good career there and, and was having a lot of success there. And, and uh, a man that, that owned Vail, the Vail ski area uh, had, had an injury, so he came to me and 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 he became uh, convinced that that I should be in the center of skiing <laughs> and although Tahoe was a wonderful place it wasn't the center of skiing and so he owned the Vail Colorado owned the Vail ski area and so he encouraged me and and uh, uh, was uh, very insistent on uh, my changing my practice to Vail Colorado and so we did that in 1990 and uh, have had good success in Vail. Yeah, um, so can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you, I, I think you've been operating people from all over the world and especially yeah. top athletes. Yes. Uh, can you tell us in which sports? Yeah, I, I, soccer is a big one yeah. and uh, so I had uh, had many uh, players from Europe that came for their, their knee injuries in soccer. I was, um, I think I, I had, I think I was one of the early people to, to put together that if you have surgery, that's important. But if you have surgery and rehabilitation, then that's the whole picture. So I was able to, um, uh, and, and I had, I was able to create experience that allowed me to see what the, the limits were in therapy. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it, when I started, everyone went into a cast after their surgery mm -hmm. for eight weeks. And um, so I knew that was wrong. So I stopped that right away. And then I had ways of, of movement uh, after the surgery and, and was convinced that, that you fix the ligaments at a, a, a tight position but but not so tight that if you move the knee that they break of course so you can you can move the knee and it actually encourages the ligaments to heal if you move the knee mm -hmm. so i think that was the, the big i think that was a big thing that i started actually mm -hmm. was was the idea of uh, immediate movement after ligament surgery and, and even if there was a meniscus we just changed the the uh, the the plan for the post-op rehab, but we always use motion for for the uh, for the post-operative period. Mm. I remember this movement. I, I had that for yes. uh, um, when I had a healing response yes. made on my knees. I, I slept with this movement yes. machine for eight weeks. I think. Yeah, <gasps> that movement was not bad for recovery. In fact, that it was important for recovery, <coughs> but that 
the um, the movement shouldn't put a strain on the ligament. Mm -hmm. So if, like, if you straighten your knee like this, it puts some strain on this anterior ligament. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, keep it, if you do it without so much force, then it's less strain and mm -hmm. and it's more, it's, it's easier for the ligament to heal. Okay. So depending on how good the uh, the tissue is, you can do varying amounts of movement after surgery, and uh, and, I th and it's desirable to have the most movement, but then you don't want to lose the stability mm -hmm. by stretching the, the weakened ligament. Mm -hmm. So we we'll just we try to decide that during surgery, how much movement is successful, and then we uh, would continue to uh, uh, work in the safe range, and then I have time frames that that uh, one ligament should be healed and it should have enough heal for healing for a certain amount of motion and it's, but I think it's important to follow the the, the rules of nature mm -hmm. because certain ligaments take a certain length of time to heal and it's uh, uh, I think that's a key uh, part of the, the healing process is is not to put too much pressure on the healing ligament mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I was your patient, I was always so impressed by your focus. Yes. You know, I, I remember um, seeing you coming into the surgery room and, and you were almost so focused that uh, you couldn't speak, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt, I felt very safe then because yeah. it feels, uh, I can see the similarities to uh, uh, athletes on, on a high level. Uh, do you feel like that, that I you, you needed true. to be yeah, focused? So when I walk in the operating room, this becomes the most important thing in my life, and and everything else is gone uh, from my mind, and I only think about the surgery and and what we can do to make the surgery successful, and if there's something unexpected, how do we fix that? So I, th I have I think a good a good concentration. Mm when I'm in surgery. I think what I, I recognized at this early in my career that that if you have a, a, a if you have a knee injury you have um, you and you're overprotected after the injury mm -hmm. with the, after the surgery you're overprotected the knee can get tight and stiff and you can never lose that stiffness mm -hmm. so as as you would remember, <laughs> I have worked hard to, we worked hard to get in motion early of after course. the surgery. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Richard. But one more question. Where does this strive to be one of the best uh, surgeons in the world to come from? Did you have it since you were a child? Yeah, I think I always, I always loved athletics and so yeah. I love to be an athlete myself and, and I, I had, um, I think I went into this area, this surgery area because I, I felt like I had a, a, a kind of a knack for for um, for it and that um, that I felt that that I had some ideas that I wanted to prove and they, that that you didn't have to when I started my surgery my uh, uh, when I started doing surgery most people that had an injury like yours would go into a cast. Mm -hmm. And they'd be in the cast for about eight weeks. And then they would come out of the cast and the leg would be shrunken. And, and, uh, and I, I knew that was not a good idea. So we actually did some experiments that showed that, that taking the knee through motion doesn't stretch the ligament. It's when you have uh, the muscle pulls the knee forward that it stretches it. So, so the passive motion, you can do that right away after mm -hmm. surgery. And then as the ligament develops strength, then you can do active motion as well with mm -hmm. the muscle the movement. Mm -hmm. So just to summarize, it feels like motion is one of the key things uh, yeah. to become well yeah, after a, a surgery. Yeah, so the, the yeah. knee is, so this would be the knee with the patella, mm -hmm. the, upper bone, lower bone, meniscus cartilage. Yeah. So, and there's an envelope around the knee that should be this big. And if it's this big, it allows the knee to go this way mm -hmm. and this way. Mm -hmm. 
but if the if if you lose even a bit of the motion on the sides of the knee outside then then you can't get the full motion back mm -hmm. and for for athletes you you have to have the full mm -hmm. motion back to get your best result mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. And um, I know you have so many pictures here. Can uh, can you just show me a few of the pictures you have? Uh, yeah. Maybe I. Uh well, there's one on the floor <laughs> over here that's uh, <laughs> a very famous skier. That, oh, uh, there I am. I treated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't uh, an easy surgery, but <laughs> and she wasn't very nice to deal with. But <laughs> but I found that it was uh, very. Very successful surgery, and uh, so I think I think the key is uh, what makes a doctor successful is is recognizing what the patient needs. Thank you very much. Ah, great. <laughs> yeah.